All right, let's go through this proof one more time. If xj is a decreasing sequence, so we're going to have the sequence going down, 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 like we had in our picture, and it is bounded below, which we had drawn with the lower bound, then there exists an L such that xj converges to L. And this L is equal to the infimum of the xj's. So let's start with the proof. The first thing we did, and remember you're proving theorem one, which is about increasing and bounded above, xj will go to L where L is the soup. That's what you're going to prove. So you need to really pay attention to this proof very carefully. The first step of the proof is we're copying over the fact that it is decreasing. So since it is decreasing, we copy over, and decreasing we've done in green, so we copy over step one, we wrote that it's decreasing, and that is given. We also use the decreasing in step three, we write down what the definition of decreasing is. It means that the xj's are bigger than the next ones. xj plus one is smaller than xj, okay? And that's just the definition of decreasing. Later on, we use the decreasing again here in step 10. We have the xj's will be less than or equal to the xn epsilons for the j's greater than or equal to m and epsilon. We're going to have this by step 3. That's all the places where we're using decreasing in this. The decreasing has in the picture where we're going down, down, down. It's decreasing, and then it continues to decrease, getting closer and closer to the infima. All right, so those are all the places where we use decreasing, and you're going to have to use increasing in your proof. The next thing we use is bounded below, bounded below, bounded below. You're going to use this bounded above in your proof. Now, how do we use bounded below? In step two, we use bounded below as given. And then in step four, we write there exists a b such that xj is greater than or equal to b. And that's the definition of bounded below. Now, where else do we use bounded below in this? In our picture, we have the bounded below sitting down here. We have this bounded below sitting down here. But where do we actually use it in the proof? Ah, where have we used it in the proof? Let's really emphasize this with a little bit of blue because we didn't emphasize this. We use it right here. There's a lower bound. In step five, in the justification of step five, we use that there is a lower bound so that we can choose L. So the way we're able to choose L is using the fact that we have a lower bound. You, can ha you have an infimum only when there's a lower bound. If there's no lower bound, there was no infimum. So that's how we use bounded below. And you are going to use bounded above and you're going to use it to prove you have a supremum, okay? So you want to be able to say, yes, I have a supremum because I have an upper bound and the continuum hypothesis. All right, so that's how we use lower bound. So after the steps one through five, we have chosen our L to be this infimum. We can choose it. We had to show, we had to show there exists an L, which meant we had to choose him. In order to show he exists, I need, wanted to show that he was the infimum. You're going to show he's the soup. I want to show he's the infimum, so I chose him to be the infimum. I still have to prove he's the limit. I've chosen that he's the infimum. The next step is to show that xj is converging to L. All this work in yellow is about xj converging to L. Once we get the xj is converging to L, we are done with our proof. We've already used decreasing bounded below. We've done the there exists as the choose of L, and we have the L equal the infimum. That's already part. And we need to prove that xj goes to L. Now, in a proof that xj goes to L, we have that whole stuff that we have to deal with. We have to deal with the for all epsilon, and then you have the choose n epsilon down here, and then we have for all j's greater than or equal to n epsilon, we have something, and then in our final line, we have to get to xj minus L is less than epsilon. So all this yellow stuff, all this yellow stuff from step six to the final line is about proving xj goes to L. So if you want, your final conclusion, of course, is that xj goes to L, and then we're done with our proof. So once we've done all that work, thus xj goes to L, 
goes to L, which is equal to the infimum of the xj's. And we're done with the proof, Q, E, D. Once we've done all the yellow work. All right, so how do we do the yellow work? Well, we use the idea of the infimum. All the work related to the fact that it's an infimum is done in this bright pink. So we first say that for all L, for all epsilon greater than zero, we have L plus epsilon is greater than L. No big deal. We've drawn that onto the diagram. Remember, we drew it here. And then we said it was not a lower bound. The fact that it's not a lower bound is a fact resulting from the definition of infimum. The definition of infimum is that L was the biggest lower bound. So let's emphasize that. I'm going to emphasize that in my th statement here. Definition of infimum and choice of L equal infimum means L is the biggest lower bound. Since it's the biggest lower bound, L plus epsilon, which is bigger than L, is not a lower bound. Good. That's step seven. You're going to be working on upper bounds and not being an upper bound. So think very carefully when you do this step seven in your proof. All right. So once it's not an upper bound, then we say using this salmon-like color, I guess. I don't know. This color here in step eight, we say there exists this J epsilon that's less than L plus epsilon. So the J epsilon is fitting under the L plus epsilon. It's this guy that we showed here. This guy right here that fit under the L plus epsilon. There he is. There is such a guy. If there wasn't such an a, a XJ that fit under there, then L plus epsilon would be a lower bound, okay? So this is following from the definition of lower bound or not being a lower bound. All right, and then in step nine, we're going to choose our N epsilon. We're just going to choose N epsilon to be that J epsilon, which we found in step eight. And then we want to say for all J's greater than N epsilon, we have something that we want. Well, we have that XJ is less than or equal to X N epsilon. Why do we have that? This is a green fact that we have. And this is a by from the decreasing. So the XJs keep going down after we get here. They keep going down. Okay. But now we put together all the facts we've already had. So what, what are all the facts we've got now? We have that XJ is less than or equal to XJ epsilon. This one is from the decreasing. This is step 10. We have that Xn epsilon equals Xj epsilon. Oh, that's by our choice. This is step nine. And we have Xj epsilon is less than L plus epsilon. And that is from step eight. Everything about xj epsilon was in step eight. So we've exactly got xj is less than l plus epsilon, combining all those three steps. Okay, and now for our final line, well, we already got this part is giving us this, and we need to explain this part. So this is the part that's justified over here. We're explaining the new part that we didn't already have. This part is just being copied over from above, and this part is being explained by the step 12. And step 12 says xj is bigger than to L, which is bigger than L minus epsilon. Because L is the infimum, is a lower bound. Okay? So maybe I could write this in the opposite direction so it's a little easier to see. L minus epsilon is always less than L. And L is less than or equal to xj because L is the infimum. So now it's written in the direction that's easier to read off. 
Now, I don't know if I really should have written that in yellow because that's really about the infimum definition. So this should be written in the bright pink, right? Okay, so let's just do that. This is because L equals infimum. So L is less than or equal to XJ. Okay, so we have that right there. And then after we have that, that's exactly what we needed to get XJ close to L. This is the standard last step, and thus we have our final proof. So we're done with this. I'll make it a little bit neater and photograph it and put it